Hello. So meshes that use different materials. Well, we've got a blue dice in the scene and we've got a red dice in the scene. If we look at those uh, objects, they're using different materials. The red dice uses this red texture and the blue dice uses this blue texture. So how do we combine those? Because if we apply we can apply either the red material and the, all the dice will be blue or red or we can apply the blue material and all the dice will be blue. Um, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could create a texture that had the blue texture on the left and the red texture on the right and somehow adjust the UVs automatically so that um, the blue dice would end up using the blue side of the texture and the red dice would end up using the red side of the texture then these could, dice could both use the same material. So what I just described that texture with the blue on the left and the red on the right that is called an atlas and uh, MeshBaker can automatically create those atlases and automatically adjust the UVs of your meshes as they're being added. To do this we need to use a texture baker. So I'm going to show you a slightly easier way to create um, your mesh baker object. So I've gone back to my basic scene and I've deleted um, the mesh baker I was using before out of it. So uh, to do this I'm going to go game object create other mesh baker mesh and material baker. So this is sort of the quick way of creating a mesh baker. Normally you create mesh bakers and material bakers at the same time although you can do it the way I did before, just with a game object and adding a script. So this time we'll start with the material baker, which has just has this texture baker script and this mesh baker grouper script attached to it. Um, let's just focus on the texture baker script for now. And the mesh baker script that we had before is a child of this, and I'll explain in a minute why it's set up that way. So much like before, we just add the objects we want and so we're going to want to add all the dice so um, there's a five and three so eight there's also faster ways of doing of adding these objects but just for simplicity I'm going to show you this way slightly painful way hopefully I'm not duplicating the ones I'm adding and then uh, the next thing down here, by the way, you can open this little um, box at the top and it has instructions explaining step by step what to do here. So the next thing is I need to create empty assets for the combined material. So um, to do the trick that Mesh Baker does of adjusting the UVs as meshes are being added, uh, Mesh Baker needs to create an extra asset in your project. Um, and uh, it's easily done by just clicking this button and telling Unity where you want it saved. So let's go uh, in here and we'll call it um, example. And if I look in that folder, um, there is now a new asset in there called example and it has um, it stores the UV rectangles in this asset. This is just a, a regular unity asset. There's nothing magic. It's a lot like a mono behavior. There's nothing uh, too magic about it. So um, uh, unity when you export a project this will export properly and import into other projects and such. Okay, so I've created that uh, and, th and that goes in the material bake result field. Um, and then there's also a combined material that was created. And for now I'm just going to accept all the default settings and click bake materials into combined material. So this is a little bit slow because it's uh, reading the images and changing their formats so it's readable by the scripts. And then it switches the formats back after it's done says restoring format and should be almost done here and when it's done there will be uh, should be a new texture in here there we go so there's a texture I was talking about before 
with the red on the left side and the blue on the right. Uh, notice there's a lot of wasted space in this texture. I'll go into that in a minute and how to eliminate it. Uh, but for now, let's just finish the example. So now that I've got this texture, can I combine the meshes? Yes, I can. I just select the mesh baker. Um, objects to combine, I don't actually have to add them. I just say click the same as texture baker box. And then I just click bake. And now we have a combined mesh that has both the blue and the red dice in it. And look, they're pretty much identical. Well, actually, they will look exactly identical in this example because it's using the same shader. And um, we can go back to that mesh baker and click the disable renders on source objects. And so now all our dice are one object. So very cool. Now um, let's go back here a minute and look at that texture. Notice all this wasted space in the texture. The reason for that is Unity likes textures to be uh, a power of two. And these original textures were uh, 1024 by 1024. So when you combine them side by side like this, uh, it makes a 2048 texture, except it also adds a pixel of padding because if we look in the max baker settings one of the options is padding if i actually remove that and set that to zero and then baked um, i won't do it because it takes a moment then um, it would eliminate that however a lot of times you if you don't have any padding between your images in the atlas you end up uh, bleeding some of the textures into other textures and you'd see things like little hints of blue at the edges of the red dice and little hints of red at the edges of the blue dice. So it's a good idea to have that padding. So is there some way we can improve that? Well, if my source textures are a power of two, I can check this box, um, resize power of two textures. What this will do is it'll shrink my source textures by the padding so that after the padding has been added, they will be a power of two. So if I do that and then click Bake Material into Combine Material, now this atlas is going to have a, the nice, or it's gonna should be just a um, two textures side by side with no extra space in it. Um, so, oh, and now why power of two? Can we? Can you use non-power of two atlases? Well, you can. We've got this force power of two atlas box checked. However, Unity recommends that power of two atlases be used for everything except for GUI textures. And the reason for that, uh, I think, has to do with how the engine handles them and the creation of MIP maps. Um, you can search on Unity answers for more explanation on why that is. Um, but by default, MeshBaker uh, recommends you use that. Now what do these other options do? Um, well the texture packer, uh, Unity includes a texture packer as part of its API however it doesn't handle memory very well and um, okay so we've just finished that. Now notice the um, our meshes look all screwed up that's because the atlas has changed and uh, the, this baked mesh is using the UVs for that previous atlas that had the big black space at the top. So what we have to do is rebake the meshes to make them work. So we just click the mesh baker, click bake, and uh, everything is back to as it should be. Okay, um, now what was I just talking about? Oh yes, the uh, texture packer. So you can use the Unity Texture Packer. I strongly recommend sticking with the Mesh Baker Texture Packer. It's far more stable uh, from a memory point of view. Fix out of bounds UVs. Um, if your mesh has UVs that leak outside the uh, the zero to one boundary, um, then they will they will pick up textures. Uh, from other parts of the mesh. So typically that um, UVs outside the zero one boundary are used for tiling. And um, there's a lot more on this in a later video I will do on um, tiling textures. 
So I'm not going to talk more about this right now. Um, max tiling bake size. If your textures do tile, Measure Baker can bake that tiling so that um, so, so that you can have tiling textures in an atlas, which is uh, normally impossible. Um, and this uh, now, when that happens, if there's a lot of tiling, that tiling can take up a lot of space in your atlas. So this is just the limit on how much space you want that to take up. In your atlas and finally custom shader property names so by default the way mesh baker works is it looks inside uh, the material for the texture properties in that material and um, if it finds them it will it will bake them and so it'll do um, bump maps occlusion maps specularity maps whatever texture properties it finds however the Unity API doesn't let me um, query what kind of properties those properties are. So because of that, MeshMaker just has a list of the properties that it looks for. And it may be that if you're using a custom shader, that your shader isn't on that list. And so in that case, or there's a texture property in your shader that isn't on that list. If that's the case, you can just type it here. You just type to and you can enter the name of that shader there. Um, most of the time you probably should not have to worry about that. And let's see here. Oh, one other thing. Um, MeshBaker will, if you go to the console, the console is your friend with MeshBaker. Um, it provides a lot of information on what goes on. One of the things it provides is this list. If you look for something with all these equal signs on it, it um, it'll describe if there are issues with the meshes that you're using that may cause the meshes to not bake properly. So it would identify things like one of the meshes has multiple materials on it or out of bounds UVs, things like that. So, um, so this will report. In this case, uh, it didn't find anything wrong with these meshes. So it just it just says that but if you, something funny is happening I'd suggest looking at this because MeshBaker will suggest ways to fix the to ways to deal with the problem um, one other thing oh two other things first off um, we've done this bake and so now we have this combined material using um, or these meshes this combined mesh that now uses this combined material. Um, what if you want to reuse that combined material in another scene? Do you have to uh, create a whole another combined material um, if you want to combine blue dice and red dice in a different scene or in a different place? And the answer is uh, no. You can, this asset that is created, this material bake result asset can be reused by other texture bakers and um, by other mesh bakers. So notice the mesh baker underneath here also has the same material bake result field. Um, so if I wanted to, if I had some other dice somewhere else in the scene, um, I could just create another mesh baker object to so create empty add component mesh baker and if the objects I'm adding use either the blue dice material or the red dice material then I can just add this uh, material bake result field I can add some of those objects and bake them in fact let's just do that so let's just add a couple of blue dice So I'm sort of added these blue dice to two different bakers, which is a bit confusing, but it'll still work. So, so these blue dice could be somewhere else in the scene, but they can share they share the same material as these other ones. So I don't have to rebake that, and I can use this um, material bake result asset in other scenes and even in other projects. I can export it using the Unity export tool and import it into another project. Um, so one common use case is to bake your ob objects in one scene and then 
um, use those objects in an, or bake your materials together in one scene and then um, just bake the objects in a different scene. And then uh, there was one other thing. Um, oh yes, I, another common situation is to have several mesh bakers under the same material baker. So for example, if I had a group of dice here and then somewhere else on the scene there was another group of dice and somewhere else in the scene there was another group of dice, then what I can do is I go under this mesh baker and I duplicate this several times. So this could be mesh baker table one, mesh baker table two, and mesh baker table three. And to each mesh to mesh of these mesh bakers, I add the dice that are on those tables and bake them separately, but they all share the same combined material, which um, is a convenient way, which is why the mesh baker and the texture baker are on different game objects. Um, I'm going to uh, talk more about that in or more about grouping meshes together uh, in a later video in this series. Um, Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about briefly is the limitations of atlases um, and what can and can't be combined. So obviously, if I tried to combine these glasses that are transparent with the dice, um, that would be a problem because the um, because the the resulting mesh can only have one material, and it would have to be either transparent or solid. Uh, so obviously, you can't combine um, materials that are radically different. However, you can combine materials that are s fairly similar like diffuse and bumped diffuse or diffuse bumped specular with bumped specular. Um, so a common way to do this is um, uh, you set up... Um, oh, so MeshBaker uses the shader in the first object on the list as the to get the default for what it should use as its its um, result shader. However, you can change that by just going to the result shader and switching it to what you want it to be. So I could set this to uh, bumped diffuse in the result shader. And even though none of my source meshes have a bump map on them, it'll still bake. So I can go back to one of these um, baker objects and click bake and it'll give me a little warning I think. Oh sorry uh, and I don't go to the mesh I go to the material baker and click bake clear bake materials into combined material. I'm going to get some warnings this time which will say um, that these source objects don't have a bump map on them and what MeshBaker does is it creates a tiny bump map and adds it. So they effectively do end up with a bump map in the combined mesh. Um, and then another limit which I've already talked a bit about is tiling. Uh, normally tiling is the enemy of atlases because uh, the um, the UVs bleed outside the 0 to 1 boundary and pick up textures neighboring in the Alice. And MeshBakers has a few ways of dealing with those, but they're not great. Um, so often you, have to, you end up combining meshes th that tile together, uh, or meshes of all the same tiling together in one group uh, as one combined mesh and other meshes that don't tile um, in another group. Okay, so uh, you should see something. I'm puzzled why we're not getting anything in the console here, but it's probably just because this box or Unity is still working. There we go. So see, it's uh, produced a whole bunch of warnings to say that uh, no texture for bump map on dice blue, a two by two clear texture will be generated. So MeshBaker, um, if texture
texture properties are missing, Max Baker will try to to add them. All right, so uh, that's all for this video. Um, look at the next video in the series for uh, the next part.